Rocking around the Christmas story. Here we are in the third, third or fourth part, I guess it is already now. And um, just to just to remind you, this series that we're doing is featuring uh, a song, a Christmas song that we sing here at the at the Rock in our style of of worship that uh, points out certain pieces of the story. And we hope that that song connected with the message that uh, you hear each week will, will put it all together for you, will remind you of what God was wanting to say to us today in his word as well as through that song. And so, so it all will, will kind of be woven together. And we've encouraged you through this series to also uh, keep each of those songs perhaps on your personal playlist and uh, you can uh, listen to those perhaps throughout the week as God comes to you to remind you of all of his promises and the things that we've talked about here at, at The Rock during this Advent season. So most all the songs, in fact, almost all the songs that we have featured so far in this, this series aren't your traditional carols, okay? And that's intentional. That's intentional so that we can also enjoy, you know, some other kind of Christmas music as well, and yet also keep the message of what God did at Christmas at the forefront. And so uh, last week we talked about ordinary people. We talked about God working extraordinary things through ordinary people like you and like me. We looked at Mary and Joseph, nothing special about them, and yet God was pleased to choose them to be the earthly parents of Jesus, the Savior. Now, in, the, in a few weeks ago, we also talked about the promises of God that are sure and, and certain, that will always be fulfilled, that He never breaks and that he's always faithful too. And so this week, as we just sang that, that song, uh, Oh, What a Glorious uh, Night, uh, it's a song that is, that is by a group called the Sidewalk Prophets. And a prophet is oftentimes confused by being one who tells the future. A prophet really is someone who has a message to declare. Sometimes that does involve forth-telling, predicting something that's going to come. But the main, the main responsibility of a prophet is to share a message from the Lord. And so how interesting that the sidewalk prophets write this song, Oh, What a Glorious Night, about this encounter of the shepherds with the angels. And the angels being these messengers of God. I, I have this image that I'd like you to, to look at. One, one person's uh, depiction of perhaps what that may have looked like on that particular night in the dark outside of, of Bethlehem. And it's all about the, 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 sh- the shepherds and this message that the angels delivered to them. And I'm always curious as to think about, what it just kind of has me in wonder what it would have been like that night. What would my reaction have been when God comes to me with this message through an angel? Well, let's take a look at this video and see perhaps maybe what that might have been like. Man has worked the field since his fall by beast or by crop in plenty and in drought. He must tame the land or be tamed by it. The shepherd knows this well. He is a keeper. He is a guardian. He is a guide. And his flock, aimless in all their attempts, pulls him far away 
to chase their fickle hearts. How peculiar it is that God Omnipotent would take the post of a shepherd. Good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, has been born this night in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find the babe wrapped in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. A baby? A manger? Glory to God in the highest! Peace on earth and goodwill toward men! Glory to God in the highest! Peace on earth and goodwill toward men! So the shepherds left their flock and hurried to the village of Bethlehem. In society's eyes, shepherds should not be the first ones to greet the king of kings. But isn't that just like the creator of the universe? He uses lowly people to do amazing things for his glory. What I want to focus on today is that is that part of the story that happened afterwards. That that reaction, that response of the shepherds in Luke two. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. And they hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. And after seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. And all who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. This amazing encounter the, with, with, with angels, uh, who, the, so many to count, and, 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 and the bright light, and, and the, 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 the singing that must have been, well, angelic and in that depiction the video we saw the them them running like crazy and even laughing it'd be the last thing you'd think they would be doing is laughing when they're terrified out of their wits but that gives you kind of a glimpse of what it must be like to be in the presence of angels and to hear that kind of 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 singing and and of all people in the world a lowly shepherd one despised by society an outcast a, a smelly a stinky individual and yet god chooses them to be the first ones to hear that the savior messiah has been born
And they don't stop there. Then they go and they see. And then after they see, they go off and they can't keep it to themselves. They themselves, hearing a message from God's messengers, the angels, become the messengers and go and tell everybody about it. What an impact that had on them. And so it got me to, got me to think about this question. When you get good news, who do you tell? When you're expecting a baby, you get on the phone and tell a relative, right? When, when it's your anniversary, you know, you may share with a friend, hey, my anniversary is today. Or maybe it'll be somebody that you didn't, don't even know. Have you ever done that? You know, if you're at, at uh, some kind of store or you're at the gas station, and just because you're, you're kind of reflecting on, on the day, maybe it's your, your anniversary or maybe uh, somebody in your family, it's their birthday, and you say, hey, today's kind of a cool day. It's my wife's birthday. You'd be surprised what kind of conversation ensues after that. When you get good news, who do you tell? Family? Friends? I mean, these days, when anything and everything happens to us, a lot of people, the, the, the first thing that they do is they go to social media, right? Yeah, I don't know what your preferred uh, uh, social media app is, but you can put up that next slide. There's a few of them. Those supposedly are the most popular ones in 2018, according to my research. I mean, people put everything on there, right? I mean, even the food that they're eating. Yeah. Look at what I just made. Or here's my birthday dinner. Uh, you've done it, haven't you? I know I have. I remember when I had the, the first uh, big uh, cucumbers that came out of my garden. I did that. I took a picture and I put it on Facebook. Look at the cucumbers that I really raised, you know. Not necessarily the best of news, but I thought it was good news to me. When you get good news, who do you tell? Well, this good news that God gives the shepherds, that they go and tell, that they receive from God's messengers, and then they become the messengers themselves, that's the same good news that God has given to you and me. God's given you the good news about Jesus. Now, you are God's messenger and follower. Or if you like the word disciple, we can use the word disciple. Disciple is one who follows someone that wants to be like their teacher. And this good news that God has, you, you know it, right? This good news about Jesus, the, the, the one that God promised, the one that God promised who would take away their sins, that would bring them what they needed most of all was forgiveness and life, to be in that right relationship with God. And through His life, his horrific death on the cross and his amazing triumphant resurrection on Easter Sunday from the grave, Jesus did exactly what God sent him to do. And he did it for you. And for all who would come after you and all who were before you. Now, just as the shepherds received that message, that angel message, and then took it to all that they came into contact with, you and I now are the messengers as well. Mark 16, 15 says that. These, Jesus says this. He said, go into the world. Go everywhere and announce the message of God's good news to one and to all. 
Some translations say preach the good news. I chose this translation because I think in today's culture, our, uh, that word preach has a negative connotation to it. Like I'm forcing you to do something. Forcing something on you. When we use that word preach. And really the word preach means to proclaim, to declare, to announce. And that's what I get to do here at The Rock. I get to announce these promises of God to you. I get to, get to be God's instruments in, in seeing how we can apply this stuff to our life. How it can make a difference. How it can transform us and how it can be a positive influence in the lives of others. How this forgiveness and faith in Jesus really works in real life. And how that life that he gives is not for just this this life. But also for the life that we were intended to have all along. Eternal life with our Father in heaven. You and I are the messengers and followers. So I'm going to ask you again the question, when you get good news, who do you tell? Well, God gives us some direction. In Psalm 78, uh, he shares us with us these words of his, Oh, my people, listen to my instructions. Open your ears to what I am saying. For I will speak to you in a parable. I will teach you hidden lessons from our past. Stories we have heard and known, stories our ancestors handed down to us. We will not hide these truths from our children. We will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord, about His power and His mighty wonders. For He issued His laws to Jacob. He gave His instructions to Israel. He commanded our ancestors to teach them to their children so the next generation might know them, even the children not yet born, and they in turn will teach their own children. So each generation should set its hope anew on God, not forgetting His glorious miracles and obeying His commands. We should tell our children We should tell our families these wonderful deeds of the Lord. And you know what? Being in this right relationship with with God through Jesus and the forgiveness that that He's won for us, that obeying part is not a burdensome deal. It's not a a, a negative thing. It's something that that we want to do because we want to be in step with a God who loves and cares about us. We want to be a reflection of that relationship with Him. And Jesus Himself even gives us some direction in in Luke chapter 8. You know, Jesus has just healed this guy of of a demon or several demons that were were, uh, possessing him. And it says, the man who had been freed from the demons begged to go with him, begged to go with Jesus. But, But Jesus sent him home saying this. He says, no, go back to your family and tell them everything that God has done for you. So he went all through the town proclaiming the great things Jesus had done for him. See, not only did he tell his family, he told the whole town. Because meeting Jesus that day transformed his life forever. So the last question I want to leave with you today is this. Who will you tell this good news about Jesus? Notice I have will and you capitalized. But I also have the word tell in quotes. Because not only is it a telling with words, but also it is living a lifestyle. 
It's living in relationship with God and with one another. It's, it's loving God and loving our neighbor. It reflects this relationship that we have with God in Jesus Christ. Not only telling the miraculous deeds of God and the things that he's, he's done for his people and that he still does today, but also being what we've talked about several times here at The Rock, being Jesus with skin on being the aroma of Jesus. As we love God, we love our neighbor. I want to share a a quote with you from um, my good friend Greg Finke in his book, Joining Jesus, Show Me How, where he talks about this this lifestyle, this this telling about Jesus through, through our loving of our neighbors. Remember, your neighbor is anyone that's not you, okay? He says this. Our first response might be, I don't want to tell anybody. He says, understandable. But if that's our response, then we're in danger of missing the point. So don't miss the point. You see, this isn't about what we want to do. This is about what Jesus disciples us to do. Baptized and trained followers love their neighbors. This is who we are. This is what we do. We, as Jesus followers, we join Jesus on his redemptive mission. This is who we are. This is what we do. We aren't given the job of fixing our neighbor or saving our neighbor. Our job is much simpler. We're to love our neighbor as the Father has already loved us. This is our small part in God's great mission. So who will you tell the good news about Jesus? You can do it. You are God's messenger. One bought back, one loved, and one equipped. One equipped to tell about Jesus. As you love your neighbor, as you care about them, as you show compassion, it's what followers of Jesus do. And so I want to leave you with this encouragement from God's word today from 1 Thessalonians. Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. God will make this happen, for he who calls you is faithful. God will make this happen, for he who calls you is faithful. So the next time you hear, oh, what a glorious night, and you hear those phrases from the song, joy to the world in there, and and, and silent night, and And you hear how the shepherds went and praised God and told everyone what they had seen and heard. Let it remind you that you are the messenger as well. And that God has equipped you. He is faithful to his promise. And he will do that through you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that you have called us to be your very own children. We thank you that you have entrusted us this this message about Jesus, this, this life that we live that is interwoven with our faith in Him. And at times, Lord, we flat out do say to you, I don't want to be the messenger. I don't want to share it. Forgive us for those times, Lord, and help us to see by the power of your Holy Spirit that this is who we are. This is what we do. And you have equipped us with your very own spirit in which to do that. To love our neighbor as we love you. To show them the care and compassion of Jesus. And perhaps through that interaction, who knows what you'll do? Who knows what questions they'll ask? We pray, Lord, that there would be questions that lead them into a relationship with you. One of forgiveness one of life now, and one of life forever. 
this we pray in the strong and precious name of Jesus. Amen.